So, Michelle. So, David. Have you ever pretended to be someone else? Um, I'm pretending to be someone who's so enthralled by what you're about to say. <laughs> I pretend it every week. You pretend to be someone else. You pretend to be someone who's interested. Yes. Much like my wife. Yep. You are my studio wife. Yes. Uh, now, there is a trade in or, or a skill in pretending to be someone else. And I'm not talking yeah. about being an actor somebody else because I do that all the time. Yes. I'm an actor. This is me being an actor now. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Anyway, there is a thing in intelligence called illegals. Right. Now, illegals are these people who pretend to be other people. Mm. Now, it sounds really interesting and quite simple, but this is one of the most complicated and difficult to pull off operations in the world. And there is an increase in it right now. Funnily enough, it's this little country called Russia that's gone absolutely ape for illegals again. You want to talk about it? Oh, my God, do I? Listening to I Spy, the lost child of Australian intelligence. Do not worry, your mommy will be coming back one day. Until then, make do. Okay. Hello and welcome to I Spy. My name is Michelle Stevenson. I'm here with David Callan and we're going to talk about illegals. Now, when we talk about illegals, we don't mean illegal immigrants. No, 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 no. We no, mean no. the illegals program, which was kind of, we'll, we'll touch on that, which is kind of a network of Russian sleeper agents. Yeah. And there's been a couple of other instances of illegals as well, which we're, we want to get into. What kind of illegals? Kind of just embarrassing. Now, yeah. this got drawn to my attention by one of our uh, listeners on our Twitter feed at I Spy Podcast. And it comes down to the story of Maria Adela Kufelt Rivera. Okay. You would like that name? I like that name too. I like it so I get to do another <laughs> crappy accent. Right. A Peruvian jewelry designer. I was going to say, is she French slash Peruvian. Spanish? She's Peruvian. Peru- okay. She's okay. not Peruvian. Um, no. She's so not Peruvian. No. Right. So Maria Adela was a Peruvian jewelry designer who suddenly was very popular around Naples mm. in Italy. Got invited to all the diplomatic functions. You know, she was this wonderful woman who did all this wonderful jewelry designer, only when it was investigated, most of it was just crap being bought from China. Right. Uh, right. So it was exposed by Bellingcat using metadata. Now, remember way back in the day when we had Attorney General George Brandis going, we're going to do stuff with metadata, and everyone went, what the hell does that yeah. mean? Yeah. Metadata is actually this really, really interesting intelligence tool that you can use. So, right, Maria Adela Cofelt Rivera, yes, I'm going to say that as many times as I can <laughs> just so I can do this. Right. She was basically there to target NATO officers. You're right. Right. She was GRU trained. Now, let's talk about the Russian intelligence organization, right? Because we talk about it all the time, but do you mm. want to know how it breaks down? Yes. This is really interesting. Right. I really do. Right. You have the FSB, which yep. is used to be the KGB, but it was the domestic one and also called the Fifth Service, which is near foreign activity. So if there's any acti- intelligence activity going on in, say, Ukraine, Lithuania, Latvia, all those, the, all the little Balkan states, it will be the FSB that's doing it. Then you have the GU, which is used to be called the GRU, which is the Military Intelligence Service, mm. but it also has subversion and sabotage okay. going on. Then you have the SVR, which is Foreign Collection and Illegals, right? Now, in Russia, there mm. are about 400,000 officers over three agencies. That's insane. That's big. That's a lot. Yeah. The only country that would have had an intelligence service comparable to that size would have been East Germany, which, funnily enough, a little KGB officer by the name of Vladimir Putin used to work in. Right. Right. So Russian intelligence has expanded exponentially so, under Putin. So is it still that big? Yeah, yeah. You're not, that it, It's that big now. Wow. Right. It wasn't that big before. That's a lot. That's almost half a million yeah, people that's, working that's, for it. We don't have an army that big. I mean, our intelligence services pro- service maximum including military. So who has the overarching, who's the person who takes care of all of it? Is that Putin? Uh, the guy with the really big table. Right. Yeah, it's, it's Putin. Look, it really runs under him. There are a lot of generals uh, and they're all generals. They're all military people wow. for some reason. They're all, all of these guys are running their individual divisions and their individual agencies. But the bottom line is everyone answers to Putin. And the other interesting thing was after Ukraine went tits up, what was meant to be a blitzkrieg and has now become mm. just a quagmire, when that went tits up, it was his intelligence services that he attacked, right? Remember all of those heads of intelligence were getting fired, Mm. arrested, locked away. This is the thing. He runs it. I mean, he's an 
ex-intelligence officer. So when it comes to cyber warfare, would that fall under the FSB yeah. or any of these? I think it would basically break down yes. through each one. They'd be both. They'd be looking at their thing. So FSB, because it's domestic, it would be looking at integrity, trying to protect their intelligence, yeah. where GU and SVR would be trying to penetrate. They'd be the ones attacking. Right. So the cyber warfare would probably... Which make, which makes sense as to why they do so well with like all the Facebook and Twitter stuff yeah. in terms of like controlling the narrative. Well, I think there's a lot of them. Yeah, I think you'd find that the bulk of that would be functionaries doing those sort of, you know, yeah. I think it's House 51 or something. It's a place in St. Petersburg, which is one of the yes. hubs for their, their bots. It is. Uh, that's on a TV show that's on um, on one of the streaming services one at of the, the moment. Stream, one of the many yeah, streaming services. Undeclared War, it's called. Ooh, and nice. it, it kind of looks at the cyber warfare with yeah. Russia. So the SV. Which is the mm. KGB's foreign collection side? You know, the KGB was split in half, right? Which is a smart thing to do. You don't want it all rolled into one. So the SVR is now taking care of that. They run the illegals program now. Back in the Cold War, illegals were a really, really interesting tool, and they they showed up. There were cases of illegals being picked up. The thing about illegals are they're damn hard to make, right? Yeah. To create an illegal persona, so put it this take way: a, that's like deep, deep, long cover. Well, it's deep cover. So out of every 100 people that entered what is now the SVR illegals program, mm -hmm. for every 100, you might get two candidates that come out, right, that are actually usable. These are people that have to – basically, they create what's called a legend. And the legend is your background. Now, yeah. as the old saying goes in intelligence, the bigger the legend, the bigger the lie, right? So if somebody's really purporting a huge legend, there's a good chance that they're not who they say they are or there's a lot of flaws to it. With an illegal, you're trying to build a really, really plain, ordinary kind of legend. Yeah. Right? Now, an interesting one was Operation Ghost Story. This happened under – it was all exposed under Obama, I believe. There were 10 Russian illegals in the US and they were tasked to recruit academic, military and government assets. Mm. Right? They were trying to get in contact with all these different people to get access. One that came out of it was a woman by the name of Anna Chapman who became a real media darling. Right, New York loved Anna Chapman. She was a Russian illegal. <laughs> what was really interesting was when she was uncovered and she was about to be sent back to the to Russia. Mm -hmm. She basically turned around and went, "No, no, no! I really love my media lifestyle. I'd rather stay. Do you mind?" To which America went on your way. Right, they booted her. So there were all of the, these had these ten illegals that they picked up. The interesting thing about it was they had an exceptionally ham fisted attempt in I think the the ten or fifteen years that they were in place, and they were in place for that long, yeah. they achieved zero. That, and that's what I was going to ask. Is it worth the time and the effort that gets put into this kind of situation? Like surely that's costing money. That's like, you know, you're oh. training these people. This is people taking 10 years out of their lives and to yeah. what end? Well, I mean, I mean, the Americans, the TV show The Americans is a really good example yes. of, you know, what happens. All illegal programs have to take a long time because you've got to put these people in place and then they've got to basically ingratiate themselves into the community they're in. Now, what was really interesting was all of these people were arrested and then they were returned to Russia in a prisoner exchange. Yes. Right. Now, there was one person, he was in Cyprus, a Canadian, in inverted commas, in Cyprus. Mm. He was the illegal cutout. He was the guy who supplied all the money. Now, when they identified, the Americans identified him and they turned around to the Cypriots and went, arrest him. And they went, yeah, can we do it tomorrow? And in the time it took for them to get to his house, you know, the next day, Gone. Go I haven't on. seen him since. Right. So Operation Ghost Story is a great indication of what can happen with an illegal program. Now, the big problem with illegals, right, is not only is the fact that they're incredibly difficult to build and they're incredibly difficult to get any result from, but the Russians seem to have a massive problem with their illegals in that it's slapdash at the best of times at the moment. Yeah, and also I think as you, as you just said, a lot of them, a lot of times, they probably like their sleeper life better than their real life. Well, that's a real. <laughs> that is the main problem because yeah. your sleepers. I mean, you can have single purpose mission sleepers. You yeah. can have someone that is sent to a country and they just wait, and they can wait for years. They can wait for decades until someone activates them, rings them up, and goes, you know, the crow is flying west at dusk. Boom, they're activated yeah. and their job is to walk across the street and deliver that envelope that they've had mm. sitting with them for so long. They may not even know what their piece of the puzzle is. The problem the Russians have, and this is how all of their sleeper programs are being exposed at the moment, and they're very they're very deep in Europe, mm. uh, and it came from Maria Adela Cofelt Rivera, they checked her passport number. Right. And her passport number was sequential to the guys that did the Novichok poisoning in Salisbury. 
Okay, that's interesting. So essentially what the Russians had done is gotten these passport numbers mm. and just went, let's just keep throwing these passports out without actually going, we need to randomise these numbers. Oh, that is so crazy. Right. Now, put it this way, to get passport numbers is complicated at the best of times, right? Because yes. it's a document that you will put on, you know, they get scanned at the airport and yep. the number is checked. So it's got to be a legitimate number. So they've obviously got numbers in a batch and mm. just gone, no one's going to notice. But they did. And the other thing with Maria Adela Kufeld Rivera I'm going to keep saying the whole thing, is her metadata blew her up. She got blown up because Bellingcat, great website. If you ever got time, go and have a look at Bellingcat. Bellingcat got a hold of the metadata for the GRU general in charge of the illegals program. Do not ask me how. I'd love to know. Mm. And then they found Maria Adela Kufelt Rivera's phone number on that list. And through that, they then looked at her passport number, realised that the passport number was sequentially in line with the Salisbury poisoning and went, hang on, boom, sleeper. Yeah. And that's how it was. Ex now, now, this is the interesting thing. This was an intelligence asset that was exposed by a media organisation, an independent media organisation in as well, right? So there is this really interesting thing going on with the Russians. They're using them, but they're being exceptionally slapdash with it. Now, interestingly enough as well, Austria keeps coming up. Now, the way they set up Maria Adela Kofeld Rivera is a really interesting story. Do you okay. want to know how she was created? Yes. I mean- According to her background, she went to the 1980s Moscow Olympics. Her mother took her there when she was a child. Mm. She was the daughter of a Peruvian woman and a German man. And her mother, for some reason, took her to the Moscow Olympics and then left her in Moscow because she had business back home. Now, here's a question. If you have business back home- wouldn't you take your kid with you because you're going home? Well, I don't know. Russians like to leave their children everywhere. But no, 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 no. They're not Russians. They're Peruvians and Germans. Oh, sorry. Right. So the Peru this is the story. The oh, Peruvian sorry. The Peruvians and the Germans took her to Moscow and left her. Sorry, I stopped listening. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a good sign. Right. So anyway, they so I feel like I need Venn diagrams sometimes oh when you're God, explaining this stuff. This is insane, this story. Yeah. Her mother left her with a Russian family that had befriended them while they were at the Moscow Olympics. This is all very dodgy. I don't believe any of this. Wait for it, wait for it. And then forgot to come and pick her up. Oh. So she was stuck with this Russian family who she never really liked. Well, look, as a parent, I yeah. can honestly say I've never forgotten to <laughs> pick up my child. I think I've got two. I think I have someone somewhere. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, the great thing was she went out into the world. Mm. She left Russia and found herself and discovered that she was a great artist and jewellery designer. Oh, wow. Right. Got a Peruvian passport, I believe. Okay. Right. So she got the right passport, just the wrong passport number. Okay. And off she went into the world and started hanging around like diplomatic cocktail parties mm, in Naples. As you do. Right. But these are the sort of stories that keep coming out, is these really, really badly structured. Yes. It's like, um, you know what it is? It's like a story that has been badly translated into English. Yeah. Do you it's know what I mean? Rushlish. <laughs> yeah. It's like in Russian, it probably was a great story. Yeah. It probably but once you translated it, it just didn't make sense. Just two guys on laptops. <laughs> oh, this is great, Boris. I really like this idea. Shut up, Ivan. I've got another one. She's Peruvian. What a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Let's make her a jewelry design. It's like the worst writing room yeah, ever. And apparently, the writing room is Count Dracula. Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> and also, you know, Netflix are like, yeah, we're going to green light this. Let's green light yeah, it. Yeah. This is great. Totally. Great idea, guys. We love this. No, 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 no. Everyone will totally buy it. Right. So it's this really ham fisted thing. What's going on in Europe at the moment is because of Ukraine and everything mm. like that. Europe is getting flooded with illegals. So I think that the, you know, one, you know two in every hundred, I think they're just like going, uh, you look, you failed, but go anyway. Yeah. Right. There seems to be a lot more intelligence officers going through. There was the great one about, and they like using Peruvians. And I think Peruvians, they use Peruvians because I think in Peru, is it Spanish? No, they speak Portuguese or Brazil, right? They speak Portuguese and Portuguese sounds a little bit like drunk Russian. Yeah. So like it kind of excuses the accent that they'd be speaking with. Right. So there is this 
absolute – they're calling Austria the aircraft carrier of Russian intelligence <laughs> at the moment. Like Vienna is absolutely rife with it. The Austrian Department of Defense is regarded as a department of the GRU. Mm. It's it's so bad at the moment in Austria because that's the doorway in. Right next door to Austria is Czechoslovakia, right? So it is kind of this porous border. It's very yeah. easy to get through. I've got friends that live in Vienna and they're constantly sending me photos of them in, you know, going for a day trip to Budapest and yeah. things, things like yeah. this. So it's a very porous area to get through. So it's very simple to get someone into the country. I don't think you even need a passport to Mm. get from Czechoslovakia into Austria. So, And Austria has for like time immemorial, right through the Cold War, it was one of the bastions. You had Berlin Mm. and you had Vienna. These were the two real hubs of everything. And then Istanbul to get into the Middle East, right? So the interesting thing with what's going on at the moment is there's been this incredible upsurge of illegal activity, yep. particularly around Europe, of course, because of the Ukraine war. What's also really interesting is the, it is another reflection of what's going on with Putin. He's getting more and more paranoid, so yep. he's pushing more intelligence assets out into the world to try and gather intelligence and also compromise his, his enemies or his opponents. I follow this interesting handle on Twitter and it's basically this person is not real. That's the Twitter handle. What a great name. Yeah, and it keeps throwing up people and a lot of them could be, you know, Russian yeah. from Russia, cyber warfare. So it keeps throwing up people who and pictures and like what their names are and their age and all of that and it says this person is not real. And it's really, really cool. I'm going to look that up. That's going to be fun. Now, yeah. there's one other thing that's really interesting is when it comes and, to but, illegals. But I think, yep. oh, here it is. It's called this person does not exist. Yep. So the handle is we don't exist here and it just throws – photos up with and it says this person does not exist and has their name age and where they're from yeah and it just has their pictures and it's just it's really really fascinating because these are people that are being created by probably russians yeah i mean the illegal for want of a better phrase the illegals which are basically false identities that have been created Mm. online that are then being used either as you know cyber stalking cyber harassment or also ways of like the whole thing is at the moment with the Russians are using false online identities Mm. to set up dates with American soldiers that don't ever meet the actual asset. They never meet the person, but they start giving them intelligence information. I mean, the classic thing is loose lips sink ships. Don't tell people where you're posted. Don't tell them what you do. But, of course, people do do that because, oh, this cute girl from the Ukraine wants to date me. Oh, that's nice. Oh, yeah, I'm actually stationed in this location and this is what I do. It's just a way of – it's fishing with a pH. Yeah, and what's interesting about this Twitter handle is, like, it pumps out photos of people that do not exist. Yeah. Like so much. Yeah. Like a couple like a couple every hour. But that's the interesting thing is that there are this wellspring of mm. of people showing up. There's one other thing I wanted to talk about and it was Trump. Yep. All right. And Mar a Lago. Uh, I don't know if you've seen him. He's this great guy. He's on YouTube, Bow of the Fifth Column. Right. He's just this American guy in a garage who talks about stuff. He's described Mar-a-Lago as, I love this, is the the greatest dead letter drop in or dead drop in history. Right. Do you know what a dead drop is? No. And we've never talked about dead drops? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Right. A dead drop. So yep. I've got a piece of information that I've got to get to you. Yep. I stick it in the dead drop and then may, maybe leave a mark somewhere that tells you there's something in the dead drop waiting yep. for you. Yep. You go yep. to the dead drop, pick it up. Yep. They're, he's basically called Mar-a-Lago the greatest dead drop in history yep. because there's so much intelligence in there. Now, what's really fascinating is the number of people that are trying to penetrate Mar-a-Lago. Right. We have the Rothschilds heiress who turned out to be the daughter of a Illinois truck driver who – basically got onto the golf course with the Don himself, Yep. right? But the interesting thing is Russia, China, there are all of these countries that are now targeting not the intelligence service, they're targeting the ex-president because he's got intelligence to burn lying around. Yeah. And, you know, the classic was the photos of the – and, you know, the whole that is a shitstorm that I don't even want to think about. But the empty intelligence folders that they found amongst oh, all of it. Which is even worse, right? Because where's the contents? And also what did it contain, I think, well, is the th- biggest question. There has been this a uh, report that came out of the CIA in October 2021 basically saying we are losing human intelligence assets overseas. Yep. That's the big worry because they – you know, one of the things the FBI did reveal was there are instances of human intelligence files 
in amongst that material. Yeah, and I think at what point do we realize that Trump is a really bad person? Uh, I don't know. He's The whole thing about <laughs> him going to court and he got one of his own judges to say, no, you've got to stop looking at it and using it as evidence. It was like, oh, God, come on, America. Well, the whole broken. idea that he could potentially still run in the next election Man, is I kind think of crazy. To be perfectly honest, Donald Trump strikes me as being the ultimate illegal. He's like he's almost like a caricature yes. of an illegal. He's a sleeper operator. cell. He's, he's a been- sleeper in his own <laughs> yeah, mind. You yeah, know. totally. It's unbelievable. So basically getting down to it, cutting mm. it, cutting it short is there are illegal operations going on in the world. I'm pretty mm. interestingly enough, you look at somewhere like China, they probably wouldn't do, use illegal operations simply because they'd use the diaspora. Right. They'd use the Chinese communities in other countries as their source of intelligence, yep. which is, I mean, that is a standard operating procedure for something like Chinese intelligence. But around the world, generally there's only 10 to 30 illegal operations happening yep. at any one time. Russia is really big on it. They're really big on it. I don't know about, say, the United States. Maybe they do. I personally think they'd probably get assets that are already in situ. Mm. The interesting thing is I tried to look up illegals in Australia and it was really hard to find anything. Yeah, because I was going to ask you, do we do this? Do we do it, Australia? Yes. Probably not. It's not our – again, it's not the way we operate. It it's also because our accent is really hard to hide. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. We couldn't say you're a Peruvian. You know? yeah. This is my friend, you know, Rodrigo Perverso Guido. Yeah, get out here, you go. Yeah. <laughs> Very much like, uh, I think, was it Brad Pitt in Inglorious Bastards when he speaks Italian? Yeah, uh, Biorno Gorno. It's like he's yeah, yeah. so terrible at it. But he's yes, and I, th- and I think Australians find it really hard to hide. Yeah, it, it's – it's. look, I find when I go to a country, I start picking up the accent very quickly. Mm. But unfortunately, I don't pick up the language as quickly. So generally, if I'm in Europe, when I leave Italy and go to Greece, I'm speaking with an Italian accent and saying, you know – You would think, though, because we have a huge Chinese community here, that perhaps you would have some Chinese Australian sleepers because they would be they would know the language. They'd be very good. That is a like that's a very legitimate point. But Mm. the problem is we're being scrutinised really solidly by the Chinese. I mean, we have journalists, Chinese, well, Chinese born journalists or Chinese descended journalists that are currently under arrest in China right now. And they can't, we can't even get to them, right? The problem with being an illegal in China is you get caught, it's game over, Red Rover. Oh, yeah. So it would be an absolutely horrific. It'd be a very, and getting someone to do it would be even harder, right? I think we would probably use more traditional intelligence routes Mm. with someone like China. The problem with illegals is, as you said before, it's incredibly expensive, it's very difficult. And ultimately, the results aren't that great. Yeah. Right. It's it's very rare that you find illegal operations that work really well. I mean, the Ameri- again, referring back to the Americans, that's drama. Right. But when you look at all the espionage cases, you know, it, from the Rosenbergs, which were nuclear secrets, they were co-opted and then yeah. recruited. You look at the guys that stole the submarine stuff, what is it? The Tobies. You know, the husband of wife, the Toybees, who uh, got busted, he was sending out USB cards in mm. peanut butter sandwiches. Again, they were recruited in situ, right? And that's where you're more likely to yes. get a good result. And I'm that just- would make more sense, right? Honestly, illegals, if you're going to use an illegal, you put them in there as a support mechanism. So they had their one job is to make sure that that, package gets yep. to that person at that time and they may wait for years to deliver that one package. Yeah. So do you think illegals is a dying breed? Not at the moment. Not if you're a Russian. I think there's a really good chance that you Well, can- I well, I feel like they have a, a lot of expendable people. Uh, well, not only have a lot of expendable people, I think there's a lot of people that you go, look, we are going to send you to live in, Ru- in USA for the next 20 years. And we will pay you. And we pay you <laughs> and you'll live the life of Riley. Okay, I go do this for my motherland. Right. I, I did tell you this. I'm sure I've told you the story about the terrorist cell that came yep. to Australia. That basically, they, yes, they you were, did. Yeah, Nor- Northern beaches. Northern beaches Sydney. started surfing, and they went, "Look, we surrender. We just yeah. want to keep surfing. We just want to keep surfing." <laughs> so were look, they able to keep surfing? That is again the ultimate problem when you look at something like an illegal is the chance that they get to the country they've gone to. Because don't forget, particularly back in the Soviet era, they were yep. indoctrinated that. This is a, you know, the rest of the world is terrible and you're living in the best country in the Mm. world. And then they move to somewhere like the United States and go, hang Hang on. on. Right. So, illegals. Bottom line is, 
I don't think it's a really good way to do your intelligence. Oh, well, I, I don't think so either. But, I think we've proved that. Yeah. But, <laughs> but you know, Australian intelligence organisations, if you are looking for someone to be an illegal in, I don't know, London, I can do it. I can do it, Governor. I'll fit right well, in. And, I, you know, if you need someone in Hawaii, I'm, ha- I'm here. Yeah. I'm here. Uh, mahalo. 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 That's how you go. And do the, the shaka side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They go, mahalo. Mahalo. They go, oh, hey, check it out, man. It's the Australian Prime Minister. Eh? I mean, I already That's like cool. poke balls, so I'm pretty much in. More spam for me. Yeah.